All right, friends, welcome back to our video webinar series on how to save your money. Today, we're gonna to be taking a closer look at how to save your cash, really how to fill up the cash bucket of your five bucket strategy. My name is Ethan Ho. I am the founder and CEO of Claw Capital Partners, and today I'm gonna to be your teacher. So when it comes to managing the cash bucket in your savings strategy, the main goal here is to find your balance, right? We don't wanna to have too much, we don't wanna to have too little, we wanna have just the right amount in your savings account. Now, when it comes to overall saving up cash and building up emergency fund, this is one of the areas where most people, when they're dealing with their finances, seem to struggle a lot with. This is where a lot of problems arise from, but it's also where a lot of benefits and solutions arise from. So addressing how you manage your cash is critical to improving your overall financial health. Now, when you have too little bit of a emergency fund or a cash savings account, this is the liquid money that if something happens to you today that you're going to be able to immediately access to fill or help whatever emergency you're facing. Now, if you have too little in your emergency savings account, and a massive emergency happens, then you are going to be left destitute. You're going to be forced to either put money on your credit card or pull money out of your investment account, which are both going to derail a financial plan. Now, if you have too much in your savings account, then you may be prepared for any type of emergency that pops up, but the reality here is that the money that you have sitting in your savings account is not working as hard as it can for you. So the goal here is to find the balance. You, you don't wanna to have too much, you don't wanna to have too little. It's kinda of like the three little bears story. You wanna have just the right amount. And this just the right amount is going to be different for everybody. So depending on how much money you make, the income you're bringing in, depending on how much your typical expenses are, are all going to dictate how much you should keep in your emergency savings account. So one of the things that is really important to consider when looking at your cash holdings is the role that inflation plays on devaluing the money that you have in your bank account. So if you've ever heard of inflation before, it is the rising cost of goods. If you think back to when you listen to maybe your parents or your grandparents talk about how much bread and gas and food and candy bars were, uh, it was a lot cheaper than it was today. You know, gas used to be 25 cents a gallon. Now it's two, three, four dollars a gallon, depending on where you go. That is what inflation does. It increases the price that you're going to pay for goods and services. So what is the average rate of inflation and how does this actually affect you? Think about this. If you're going to go and you're going to buy, let's say, a TV, and this TV is going to cost $100 today. Now, the average rate of inflation, we're going to call it at 3% per year. Now, it changes between, you know, 2 to X percent, but we're going to say the average is 3% because this is realistic. Now, if you decided to purchase a TV today, it would cost you $100. But if you decided to wait a year from today and purchase that same TV from the same store, but that same TV is now going to be more expensive it's gonna be actually $103 because inflation has increased the price of this specific good. So how does inflation devalue the money that you're keeping in your bank account? Let's say that you have $100 in your savings account, right? And your savings account is earning you an in interest, let's call it 1%. Now the reality is most savings accounts in today's interest rate environment is earning less than 1%, but to keep the math simple and to keep it a conservative illustration, let's call it 1%. This means at, at the after a year has passed, that $100 that was sitting in your savings account is now worth $101. So let's compare that to the TV purchase. If the TV has increased throughout the year by 3% or $3, and the amount in your savings account has increased by 1% or $1, what's actually happening here? We're seeing a $2 decrease in the purchasing power your money has, which is really just allowing you to buy less 
goods and services. So in this example, where you were able to afford a TV in year one, you are now $2 short of affording the same TV at the end of that year. So we want to make sure that inflation is being combated in a reasonable and respectable way, but we also need to make sure that we have enough money on hand to handle any type of emergency that does pop up. The next lesson that I would like to illustrate when it comes to your cash savings account is opportunity cost, or what I like to sometimes refer to as opportunity loss. So when, when we make choices in life, every choice is going to lead us down a specific path. But what we're going to have to give up to go down that specific path is the option to go down a different path. This is a general overview of how opportunity cost or opportunity loss works. So if we were going to take this example and run with the emergency savings fund that we've been discussing about, let's say you are on the happy side or you are on the, the I have too much in my emergency savings account. I'm going to go with $50,000. Imagine you have $50,000 in your emergency savings account, so you have more than enough money to handle any type of emergency that pops up, but you've identified the biggest potential emergency that you can see as a reasonable emergency to happen to you, let's say is $25,000. So this means that you are sitting on an extra $25,000 in your savings account or your checking account or your cash account that is not working as hard for you as it could. This $25,000 is earning, we'll say maybe that 1% that a savings account could earn. Realistically, it's less than 1%. So the question that you're going to be asking yourself now is, how do I take this $25,000 and repurpose it to either help save me more money or help make me more money. So for example, you let's say you have some credit card debt and your credit card debt is at an interest rate of 18%. And you have in this example, 25,000 of credit card debt. You could take this money from your savings account that is more than you need, pay off your credit card debt and essentially go from earning 1% to saving 18%. So if I was going to ask you, would you rather earn 1% on the money in your savings account or save 18% on what you're paying to borrow money, what would your answer be? Let's take this example um, and put it kind of on the other side of the spectrum. Let's say you don't have any credit card debt. You've done a really good job of managing your finances to this point so far. But you do still have an extra $25,000 sitting in your checking or your savings account. Now you're going to be faced with the opportunity of potentially investing this extra $25,000 to earn more than you would be able to earn in your savings account. So let's say you choose to put your investment into something that's really conservative and reasonable. Let's call it an index fund. And this index fund has earned 8% on average per year for the last 10 years. Would now you're faced with the opportunity of either making one 1%, this is just keeping your money in your savings account, but to keep your money in the savings account, you're foregoing the option or the opportunity you have to invest that money and earn a potential 8% rate of return. So the difference between an op, the 8% potential rate of return that you could earn and the 1% that you're earning in your savings account is your opportunity cost or your opportunity loss of 7%. Again, let me ask you the question, would you rather make 1% or have the potential of making 8% per year? Now, when it comes to managing your cash accounts, we really want to make sure that you're setting appropriate goals. So we've been talking about having the right amount in your savings account, but really what is the right amount? The right amount is going to come down, like I said previously, to how much money you're making and what your expenses are. So a typical rule of thumb has been to have three to six months of your monthly expenses in your cash account so that if something happens to you, you can, and when I say something happens, this means you you are injured and you can no longer work, you need to take time off because of a family emergency, you're no longer earning an income. 
This is going to give you three to six months to be able to get back on your feet and not be so financially stressed and pressed to come up with some type of money to pay for food, to pay for rent, to put a roof over your head, clothes in the back, and food on the table. Now, with recent, in light of recent events, our global pandemic, this three to six months emergency fund may not have actually fully stood the test. We saw that our economy shut down for longer than six months and people were out of a job for upwards of a year. So we might want to consider having maybe three to 12 months of emergency savings left over just depending on your job security and your ability uh, to earn an income, whether you're an essential employee, whether you're not an essential employee, whether you're a government contractor and your contract renews every year or you're a government employee and you have really, really stable job you know, security or you're an entrepreneur running your own business and things are always in flux and always in change. Having an emergency goal is super important, but it's going to differ depending on your situation. So easiest way to do it is figure out your, your monthly expenses, whether let's say it's $5,000 a month and then I... Weigh that against your risk tolerance and your ability to get back on your feet in 3, 6, 12 months and, and then build up an emergency fund that's going to allow you to sustain yourself for 3 to 6 months and maybe even a year. Now, one of the big issues that I see when it comes to people managing their finances is, is overdrafting on their checking account. And if you look at the statistics on how much banks actually make when it comes to overdraft fees, it's quite astonishing. So to avoid overdraft fees, it's a really good idea to keep a minimum amount in your checking account. So let's say that you know that every single month your bills are $5,000. You don't want to keep just $5,000 in your checking account because that's going to drain you down to zero every single month. It might be a good idea to keep $10,000 in there so you have an extra month buffer between where you, your bills are drafting now and the, the next month. Maybe you don't have the full amount and you want to keep just a one or two or $3,000 buffer. This is going to help you avoid overdraft fees, allow you to move money around if you make a, a large purchase that's not typical. Um, it's just going to allow you a little bit more flexibility and breathing room when it comes to actually managing your cash. And what I find is that when people implement this strategy, it increases their happiness, it reduces their stress, and it makes dealing with their personal finances just a little bit more tolerable. The next thing you're going to want to do is identify short-term purchases that are important to you. So we all work really hard for, the money, for our money. We don't want to set up a system that we're putting everything towards the future and nothing to our present today. You know, you want to find that balance between the things that are most important and the, uh, the things that are going to get you out of bed focused on, you know, going to work and generating an income. And a lot of times for people that can be short term purchases that can be maybe an exciting trip with the family that can be a new car that can be a new maybe a new handbag of sorts. But these are more of your luxurious purchases that you do not have a specific need for they're more of a want but if you make sure that you carve out space in your cash management bucket to make these short-term purchases then you're going to feel less guilty when you do make them and you're going to know that you had a plan that was structured to allow you to invest in yourself in a sense which is just take care of yourself have fun enjoy the money that you're working really hard for um, and again find that balance now, last but not least, and I honestly cannot stress this enough, is automation of how you save your money. So instead of having to move, let's say, $500 a month into your savings account and then move a little bit into your uh, short-term purchase account and then make sure that you still have a minimum in your, your checking account, you want to set this up to do it automatically. This is going to lean into the, the philosophy of paying yourself first, and it's also going to just take one less to-do off of your long list of to-dos. So automation simply means creating either a direct deposit or automatic transfer from your checking account to your savings account. 
you want to identify the amount that you're going to be able to put towards your emergency savings. So let's say you can do $300 a month to your emergency savings. We want to do your um, short-term purchases. Let's say you can do $100 a month there. And then we want to make sure that we're continuing to build a buffer in our checking account. So we put $50 a month there. Now in this situation, you're saving $450 a month. But if we, can, if we categorize it to each of these different savings and checking accounts, you're going to be able to, one, have this saving strategy happen for you regardless of whether you log into your account and actually move the money. It happens automatically. So if you're on vacation on the first of the month or you're dealing with a stressful work situation, you don't just miss the boat and forget to either invest and then you know your savings account doesn't grow and you have an emergency and then you don't have enough to take care of the emergency and your whole plan is derailed. So automate your savings plan. This is automate how much you put into your checking account, your savings account, and your short-term purchase account. So with that, you guys, I want to wish you the best and have an awesome rest of your day. And let me know if you guys have any questions about anything that we covered in today's lesson or if you want to go even deeper on any of the specific subjects. Have a wonderful day.